Hey there, I'm Juniper Seed, and this is the Rift Breaker. I'm going to check this out today. This just came out uh, yesterday on the 14th of October. And really cool game. It's a nice blend of multiple genres. It has a little bit of base building, great swarm survival, some hack and slash action. And we are going to jump into a new campaign to check things out. The, uh, I've done the tutorial so far, at least prologue. It's a lot of fun. Helps you get acquainted with the mechanics of the game. And it also has a really cool survival mode. But for now, we're going to do a new campaign. Um, we're going to do this on normal. And let's check it out. Hope you guys enjoy. Riftbreaker Ashley reporting successful jump procedure. Roger that. Begin field base setup. It's closing in. Successful. All systems check. Gravitational strength 1.05 G. Atmospheric pressure within safe levels. Magnetic field check. Error. Repeat magnetic field check with stationary equipment. Star system positioning check. Milky Way Galaxy. Sycorax Belt. Planet Galatea 37. Ashley. We have arrived. Welcome to Galatea 37, Mr. Riggs. It's so beautiful here. Virtual simulations on Earth were good, but this is amazing. An alien tropical paradise. And we're the first humans to experience it. I'm not exactly human. You have a few parts missing as well. And the paradise part is also left to be determined. Remember your training, Ashley. We should set up a base as soon as possible. You could at least pretend to be human. Just a bit. But you're right. There's no going home until we can construct a functioning rift station. Let's start with the basics. Ashley, construct a headquarters building to secure our presence here. It will allow me to reconstruct if my armor is destroyed. All right. So here we are on Galatea 37. We are Ashley. And our mech that we're in is called Mr. Briggs. So, one of the main things that we need to do to get started is acquire Carbonium. Or be near it at least, so we can set up our headquarter building. So this building is kind of the uh, lose condition. If you lose your headquarters, you'll headquarters lose the game. is in progress. This is going to be our main base of operations on Galatea 37, our new home. We have to protect this building at all costs. You will be teleported here whenever I am critically damaged. There is no other backup if this building is destroyed. That's basic training, Mr. Riggs. Let's focus on the less obvious things. I am required to remind you of basic protocol, even if we've done this before. Our base will require huge amounts of power to operate. Right now, we can only construct some basic power plants. Wind turbines and carbonium power plants. Wind turbines are less effective, but they work around the clock. 
Carbonium power plants are very effective, but they use up the deposits that they are placed on. In the beginning, it's best to use a combination of these power sources. We can balance energy peaks and shortages by storing excess energy in energy storages. Also, remember to connect all buildings to the power grid using energy connectors. They connect all buildings within their area of operation, even if power lines are not visible. Alright, so we have the foundation started. These extractors, or factories, will gather the carbonium for us. Um, Ashley, we can see our resources sure our presence will not go in the top right hand we corner. We should build up our base as quickly as possible. Standard protocol advises to set up walls and sentinel towers around the base. However, I don't expect as much aggression from the native fauna as in the simulations. So far, it looks like the long-range quantum scans were very accurate. The local fauna and flora appear almost exactly like during training. Follow the protocol, Ashley. The environment in the simulation was very accurate. That's true. But the scenario was crafted by Riftbreaker Command. They usually focus on the brute force aspect of these missions. Do you want to run a brute force check if this is a simulation? You never give up, do you? Do you? Okay, Mr. Stubborn. I guess it won't hurt to set up some solid defenses, just in case. Thank you, Captain Novak. You're welcome, Mr. Riggs. Love the banter between Ashley and Mr. Riggs so far. <laughs> So we're going to continue getting our power source started by using some wind turbines to get going. Uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Throughout the game, there's going to be situations in which the wind turbines won't function, or they'll function less well. Uh, so we're also going to throw down some uh, solar panels, even though it's getting to nighttime right now. That way during the day we'll be able to have uh, different types of energy generation. And then we're just helping out our carbonium excavators here to generate a little bit more resources. These energy storage buildings will increase our capacity, you'll see up in the top right hand corner, so that way we can have more energy uh, in excess at a time. And we're also going to set up this Ironium ore. So each of those is going to take 20 energy on a tick. So we're going to have to make even more wind turbines to get going. And then in 4 minutes and 30 seconds we're going to have an incoming attack. I would like us to make six sentinel towers, which are some machine gun turrets that will help us defend our base. If this is anything like the tutorial or the survival mode, hopefully we'll be able to get by without making all six of those right away. So I would much rather have our resources build up first, and then we'll work on heavy defenses later. But I'm very new to the game, still learning. And um, it's hard to say what the right strategies are. So we'll learn as we go. We're going to connect these to the power network. Oh, a little meteor going overhead. It's exciting. Going to clear out our friends over here that I can see on the radar. So on the mini map in the bottom right hand corner, the small gray circle indicates our uh, radar. That'll detect any life forms that are coming in. Uh, we're just... Carbonium storage is full. Build more storage facilities. So just like with the energy, we're gonna have to increase our capacity for our resources. These buildings will help us do that. I strongly advise you to construct an armory. It will allow us to craft new weapons and upgrades, and also manufacture field repair kits, as well as other usable items. And it will produce more ammunition for your guns. Yes, that is an important building. So 
to the armory that Mr. Briggs explained. Um, that will replenish our ammunition. So right now for this uh, machine gun, we have zero of 320. We used all our bullets. After this is constructed, over time it will just generate ammunition for us. We don't have to be near the armory, it'll just work on its own. And the ammunition will get sent to us, which is kind of nice. Helps keep you in the action. Just doing a little bit of exploration right now. So a lot of Ironium ore around. Hopefully we'll find some more pockets of Carbonium. Armory construction finished. We can now use it to craft new items. It will also automatically manufacture ammunition for my weapons. And we're gonna get attacked in another minute. So I did a little bit of exploration. I'm gonna try to set up some more defenses. Get rid of this. Those little guys when they explode do a fairly sizable amount of damage. From what I experienced in the tutorial. And so far I don't really know the best way to set up uh, the defenses. But these walls are only so strong, so I would like to double up on those. And we're just going to make some choke points around the base here for when the, uh, the swarm comes in. And we do need some turrets. I don't really know where the enemies are going to come from. So we're just going to do two here. We'll do two up here and get these connected to the energy network. I don't have enough AI cores to support any more defensive towers. You will need to construct additional AI hubs to expand our defenses. Remember to build more power plants before you do that. AI hubs consume a lot of energy. I'm detecting a large group of creatures heading towards our position. It looks like our presence is being noticed. Ashley, we don't have a lot of defensive structures. Prepare to fight. I guess you were right about setting up more defenses. We'll have to handle this ourselves. Remember to use repair kits if necessary. We'll be fine. No worries, no worries. Uh, looks like the enemies are going to come from the bottom left. You can see on the mini-map the little indicator. So... Just to help out a little bit. Maybe we should go this way. Just put a little set of walls here, and then we can make this a, a small choke point between all these rocks. For the campaign, compared to the tutorial and survival mode, I'm assuming that this first wave is going to be pretty mild. Um, we are only playing a normal. And here it comes. Steel storage is full. Build more storage facilities. All right. Ashley, are you still skeptical about the local creature's level of aggression? I'm skeptical about the procedures for prepping this planet for colonization. Humanity lost its love for nature after the Yellowstone eruption. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to preserve this ecosystem. Earth is barely habitable at this point. We have to secure Galatea 37 for colonization and resource extraction as soon as possible. Excessive care about the local environment is unnecessary. That's not entirely true. Other rift-breaking missions have already secured a number of resource-rich planets for humanity. We're not on the brink of extinction. Our goals on this mission are clear, and our survival and security is the top priority. Damage to the ecosystem is inevitable. 
You wanted to come here yourself, and you knew what has to be done. Are you doubting the mission? I know what has to be done. That's not the point. Galatea has to be prepared for colonization. I don't doubt that. If I didn't come here myself, then someone else would have. I believe that we can do this in a better way. We have to defend ourselves and secure the necessary resources to set up the rift station. But we don't have to destroy all the wildlife we encounter. Humanity doesn't need another stripped down factory world. If we want to progress as a species, then we should study this planet and learn how to blend with the environment and prepare a safe home for humanity. All right, so power is looking pretty bad right now. I do like that Ashley, uh, we get to learn a little bit about her motivations and her morals. It looks like we have the base up and running. If you'd like to construct more advanced buildings, you'll have to upgrade the headquarters building. Unfortunately, this process also emits a lot of high frequency energy waves. These creatures are clearly drawn to our energy emissions, so it will be like an alarm bell for them. We should strengthen our defenses before upgrading the HQ. Alright, just clearing out those explody guys, so I don't accidentally blow up my buildings or myself when uh, more enemies come around. We got some ranged enemies, some hydralisks if you will. Alright, so I have a little bit more resource generation coming out of this. I'm just gonna surround this area. And we'll make some ways in and out for us. Beautiful. Uh, we can put some defenses out there in a little bit. Um, for the time being, um, once you have your armory, you're able to do some crafting. So in our menus, we have an event log. That'll show us everything that's kind of gone on recently. We can go back over all the discussions that we've had, and everything's sortable by um, what type of event it is, and you can replay them. Which is really cool. These creatures are clearly drawn to. Um, we also have, excuse me, a database that I have not got to mess with yet, so we'll learn about that later. We have our orbital scanner, which I also don't know much about yet, but I do know that eventually in the campaign we're going to go to different parts of the planet and set up multiple bases, and all of them will apparently come together to create one giant. Uh, base of operations for us across the planet. We have our crafting, which we're going to get into now, our inventory, and some research that we'll be able to get to soon, and our settings, of course. So in our crafting, we can make a sword. We have a special thing that I unlocked in a survival mode. I didn't realize that this stays with us, but it's pretty cool. So a late game item for us, and some armor plating that we can make gives us some more hit points, some damage resistance, so that would be very nice. But to get started, we're going to make a shotgun. Crafting completed. So shotgun complete. Um, it does have a charged attack, longer range and narrow spread, bigger damage and penetration power. Um, we're going to go to our inventory and here we can mess around where our weaponry is. I'm going to move this blaster from my right hand to my left. This doesn't use up any ammo, it's just on a charge system. And then I'd like to keep the things that use different ammunitions on the right hand. Uh, but that'll probably change up as we go through the campaign. So in addition to our little machine gun, we now have our shotgun. And it has that charged attack. Very cool. Um, so yeah, we're getting right along. We have a little bit of energy storage, we have our carbonium building up, we have ironium over here. 
Um, we have our armory, so we can craft things. And next thing is going to be to upgrade the headquarters. And as it said, when we upgrade, we're going to cause a big commotion and a lot of enemies will come to try to fight us. Um, so right before we get to that, I'm just going to make sure that we have some defenses built up. I'm going to wall off this area here. We'll make another exit from the base. And then we do need these AI cores. So up in the very top right, the 0, 4, that's how many AI cores that we have. Um, this structure, the AI hub, will give us plus 4 per hub that we make. Uh, but it does take up 20 energy, which is a pretty sizable amount. Let's see what Steel we can storage throw these is down. Full. Build more storage facilities. Not that you have to, but I like to build them in this little uh, cross. They're a diagonal cross. And we're going to throw down a little bit more energy because we are running low. But now that we have our resources building up, we can kind of build these en masse, which is quite nice. And we do want to protect our energy generation. Power is very important to us. Get rid of all these explodies. have a little bit of rocks to work with for some natural defense. I'm going to try to take advantage of that. Let's see. Oh, this is a mud pool. Alright, so that's going to slow us right down walking through there. It's okay. And I don't have my AI cores. I didn't connect them to the energy network or the power network. Let's get those connected. So now we have 16 cores that we can use. That means 16 more sentry t or sentinel towers. And I'm going to start putting these up by our power production. And then also with these towers, if I try to shoot my machine gun, I just shoot into the tower. Uh, so one thing that we're going to have to start doing is putting down these platforms in defensive positions. And from the platforms we can get up over the towers and shoot out at any enemies that are nearby. Very nice! Uh, we are a little bit susceptible from the bottom right here. Uh, the mud pool, I don't know if this is going to slow down enemy units, and it looks like we can't actually build on this. Um, there is chlorine that we can make, but can't place that down on the mud either. Okay, so that'll be something to deal with. And I'm assuming the campaign's going to chill for a minute until we get the... Um, headquarters upgraded. So this is kind of nice. It'll give us a little reprieve to get more defenses set up and just have the foundations of our base ready for whatever lies ahead. This geothermal vent here, we can use that for power generation later after we get some more technology researched.
All right, so for now, we have a base set up. We're ready to upgrade our headquarters building, and that will get us to the next part of the campaign, and hopefully get us with some new technology to research, new weapons to craft, and new buildings to build. So for the time being, we'll sign off, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. Appreciate you.